here we'll examine the idea of electromagnetic breaking, which is one of many possible applications of eddy currents. Now, before we get into electromagnetic breaking, I just really want to point out that electromagnetic breaking is not the same as regenerative breaking. So you may have heard of regenerative breaking in the context of electric vehicles, which is something else that is very much related and also relates to your concept of electromagnetism. That's relating more to use your motor as a generator. And we can talk about that as well um, at a different time. But we're going to now focus on electromagnetic braking, which is not the same thing. We're not going to get the energy back, right? This, this reclaims your energy to the battery and is therefore designed in a little bit of a different way. But we're going to focus on electromagnetic braking, which is going to be the first sort of option, I suppose. So let's imagine you've got a wheel of a vehicle. And let's say this wheel, from our perspective, is rotating in an anti-clockwise direction. And right now, you can ignore this region. And so this wheel is spinning freely. And then all of a sudden, you've got a dog running in front of the car, for example, and the driver needs to stop the car. Now, to stop the car, what the driver wants to do is to stop this wheel spinning. Under a traditional brake, otherwise called a friction brake, you basically just get um, a, to a piece of steel, push hard on the wheel, get the two bits to rub together, and slow down the car that way with friction. And that's why you've got to replace the brakes every now and then. But we're going to look at a different type of technology called electromagnetic braking. And consider what happens if we create a magnetic field, but not over the entire wheel, but only in a particular region, say this one here in this rectangle. Now, it won't really matter which direction, but let's say we create a magnetic field going into the page. So we're saying, we activate the brakes, which then means we turn on the magnetic field. So when it wasn't, when you didn't want to break, the magnetic field is off. When you did want to break, the magnetic field is activated. And of course, we've studied electromagnets before. So that would suggest that it would be much more, uh, it would be electromagnets would be a good application of this. You start passing the current. All right. Now, with this electric uh, magnetic field activated, let us consider a particular point such as this point A. This point A is on the wheel. And like this entire wheel, it is rotating in an anti-clockwise direction, which means it's going to go sort of here, sort of in, into here. This is the path of A. It's going to go from A to A prime. Now, when it goes from A to A prime, we can examine that and can say it's going to experience a change in flux because A has no flux. It's not in the magnetic field. But now it's going to move to A prime. And when it moves to A prime, it's going to have the flux being into the page because we've chosen for the region to be into the page. And therefore, it should be quite clear that there has been a change in flux. Before you had no flux, after you got flux into the page. So the change in flux is into the page. And with that in mind, we will now start applying our laws. So by Lenz's law, we will want to create a magnetic field in this area that is out of the page. And if you use your right-hand grip rule to create a out of the page, you're going to want to create a anti-clockwise current. So this anti-clockwise current that will be induced will flow in this direction here. Anti-clockwise. Because what we want is this section over here, right? We want this section over here to oppose the change in flux. It's this area that's going to go from no flux to 
into the page. So this is what's the section we will get the anti-clockwise current. All right. Now, focusing on this particular current for now, this current flowing down is not in a magnetic field. So it's flowing, but it's not in a magnetic field. So not much is happening. This current, though, is the right-hand side of this anti-clockwise current, and it is flowing in a magnetic field. So we've got a current going up in a magnetic field going into the page. And that tells us that we should get a motor effect. And we should get a force, right? We've got a current going up. We've got the current going, a uh, magnetic field going into the page. So using our right-hand palm rule, we can work out the direction of this force that will result as the result of a motor effect. And that force direction in this case would be to the left. Right? Think about your fingers pointing into the page, your thumb pointing up representing the current direction. And that would very clearly tell us that the force we experience will be to the left. And then if we've got a force to the left, and that's the force on, if you like, A or this section, you can probably see that, well, the force to the left across here at the bottom of the wheel will create a counter torque, you'll create a clockwise torque, or without being too technical about it, I mean, you can probably see the wheel is trying to turn this way, it's trying to go to the right at, at this area, you're giving it a force to the left, technically it's, a, it's going to create a counter, counter torque, and so you're going to end up slowing down the wheel and therefore breaking the wheel. And that's basically how electromagnetic braking works, essentially. Now, I've only drawn half the picture. And so you can try and run through this side by yourself. You can give that a go, but I'll run through it more quickly now because it's very similar. So imagine we consider the point B. It's on the wheel, so very similarly, it will rotate out to B prime and it will experience a change in flux. In the B's case, it's going from into the page to nothing. So that means that the change in flux it experiences is out of the page in this case. And if it experiences an out of the chain page flux, then we need to create a flux that is into the page to counter that. And to create a flux into the page to counteract, we would use the right-hand grip rule, which in this case would mean it would be a clockwise current. And because it's a clockwise current, that results in this part of the current flowing upward inside a magnetic field going into the page. You have a current inside the magnetic field it's going to express a force due to the motor effect. You can see in both cases, you end up with an upward current inside the region, which gives you the same magnetic field. They'll therefore both give you a force in the same direction, which is left at the bottom of the wheel, which will essentially slow down the wheel. And that's basically why electromagnetic braking works. Note, I've done this example as a region at the bottom of the wheel, with a uh, flux created into the page. You can change it. You can create flux out of the page at the bottom of the wheel. You can change where it is. It doesn't matter, okay? You can think about it in more simplistic terms as we kind of have done before, which is once the magnetic field is turned on, I mean, we've talked about the details, but one, once you activate the electric field, remember you want to minimize they always want to minimize the change in flux. And that you can think of as, well, one way to minimize change in flux is don't turn, right? Minimize the relative motion. If the wheel just doesn't turn, then there's no change in flux between all the different parts, right? So we'll minimize the relative motion, 
which therefore means you don't want to rotate. So that obviously doesn't go into all the details, but it kind of gives you a broad sort of shortcut version to think about it, to kind of think of what the answer should be. We've gone through the details in terms of the direction of the current and the direction of the forces and the torques and so forth, which you generally don't need to answer in a specific electromagnetic braking question, but you may need to depending on the detail the question requires. But you can hopefully see from this general idea that this occurs irrespective, it does not matter, of the direction of magnetic field, whether you design it as going into the page or out of the page, or where the region is, or whether the wheel is turning clockwise or anti-clockwise to start with. None of that matters. Once you turn the region on the wheel in one section, in any direction, doesn't matter which way the wheel's turning, you'll end up stopping it. And that's basically how electromagnetic braking works. Remember, it's not the same as it's not the same as regenerative braking, which is really much more in line with a generator slash motor scenario than this scenario.